Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Janneke, this is Books and Stitches and today we're gonna talk about books. So some of you may be aware of YALK, some of you may have never heard of it, but YALK is the Young Adult Literature Convention which happens every year in London and this is the first year I think that is happening again since Corona and everything and I am so excited to go again. So I thought why not make a video about it, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I have not planned this, I have no notes, so we're just going to ramble probably. I'm going to show you all the books I bought and also the books I already own that I'm going to take with me to London to get signed. Um, yeah, let's start with an introduction to YALK, I guess. As I said, YALK is a young adult literature convention in London that happens every summer in July. Uh, I've gone a couple of times before and I've always really loved it. Uh, there are a bunch of stands where you can like buy books pretty cheap usually because they're like deals for it which is super fun <laughs> um i always spend way too much money so expect a book haul after yuck which will be like somewhere in july expect me to do a book haul with all the books i bought in london which will be way too many and i'm gonna struggle carrying them all back home again but expect that book haul because I always buy way too many books and spend way too much money <laughs> at Yalk. But besides all the stalls where you can buy stuff, there are also panels with a lot of different authors, mostly British ones, but there are some American ones that come every year as well. So, you know, there's a variety of people, but there are some British ones who are there every year, which um, I, a lot of my favorite books I found through Yalk, to be honest. Uh, Holly Bourne is one of my favorite authors and I had never even heard of her before I went to Yalk for the first time. I went to Yalk, I went to a panel where she spoke at and I was like, oh my god, she sounds so fun, I want to give her books a try. And I have loved every book I've read by her so far. So yeah, Yalk is amazing. There are also some workshops, sometimes they're like uh, more fun games, I think. This year they're like all focused on writing, so I'm probably not gonna check any of them out. But in 2019 there were some like more gamey workshops as well, which I had a lot of fun attending. And there are also agents arenas where you can like have, um, I think if you have questions or something about getting published, that's where you go. But as I'm not a writer, I don't really attend those either. But there are also a lot of signings. Every author who attends YALK is slotted into the schedule to sign their books at some point, which is super awesome. So I have gone through all the authors and I've narrowed them down to the ones I already have books from that I don't have signed yet and the ones that sounded super, super interesting to me. And that was really difficult because a lot of them sounded interesting. So I would not be surprised if the books I'm going to show you right now are not the only ones I'm getting signed because when I'm there I'm probably gonna hear someone speak at a panel and be like oh my god I want your book and I want your signature so yeah but uh this is gonna be a mess of a video I should have planned this beforehand shouldn't I um anyway I have gone through all the offers who are attending YALK who are announced already because I have noticed that they're like some announcements here and there still for offers who end up coming anyway but weren't in like the first batch of announcements but in like the first major batch of announcements everyone who was announced i went through the list checked out what books they had written if i already knew them or owned books by them or you know if i found them interesting or not and i narrowed it down to 12 books which honestly i have to take 12 books with me all the way to london in the plane and then i'm gonna buy so many books in london so i am fingers crossed i'll be able to take them all back with me and they're not too happy because honestly that is like the biggest issue with having to travel to London to get all these books just the weight limit on my suitcase <laughs> but I will be showing you the 12 books I will be taking with me to London to get signed so let's start with Holly Bourne because I've already mentioned her I own a lot of books by Holly Bourne and a lot of them I've already gotten signed previous years at Yelk so the free I'm going to bring three books of Holly Barnes with me. She's the only author I'm bringing more than one book of me with because I just, I love her so much. And every other book I own by her is signed except for these three. So I'm like, 
oh, I want to get all her book sites. So um, I have not read any of the three I'm going to show you, but I have read other books by her and love them. So yeah, let's get started. So all three of these books I already owned, so I didn't buy any of these new for Yalk because, yeah, I already know I love Holly Barnes books, I just want to own every one of them, to be honest. The first one is The Places I've Cried in Public, which is, I've, which I'm pretty sure is actually her first adult novel instead of young adult novel. Um, this is, if I remember correctly, I like, it's been a couple of year, years, to be honest, since I was like, read what this was about. But if I remember correctly, it's about um, a girl who breaks up with her boyfriend and like she realizes he was abusive, I believe. And now she's like going back through her relationship and like looking at where stuff went wrong. It sounds really interesting. Um, yeah, so one of the lines on the back says she's retracing the story, revisiting all the places he made her cry which is why it's called The Places Are Fried in Public. And I am really excited actually to read this book. This book was like, not published yet, but like promoted during the last Yelk I attended, which was in 2019. And so Holly Bourne actually ran like a game kind of workshop where you like basically had to say if something was romantic or a red flag. So yeah, I really love that and I'm really interested in reading the book. I am very excited to give it a shot and I'm very excited to get it signed by Holly Bourne. Yeah, uh, the next book by Holly Bourne that I will get signed is The Yearbook. Again, I'm not 100% sure what it's about. That's going to be a recurring theme. I just love her books. I bought it when I saw it. But um, if, I, if I'm correct, it's about high school and more of the dark side of high school and a lot of lies as well, which I always find really interesting, so I'm sure I will love it. Um, one of the lines on it also says, like, um, it's time to expose all the rumors and most likely to bring down the mean girls. So that sounds really fun. It kind of sounds like a bit like Gossip Girl, if the plot of Gossip Girl was like to take down Blair and Serena, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I it sounds really fun. There's also a terrible explanation of what it's about, but like high school drama and gossip and everything, I always love books about. So I will love this book, I'm sure. And this, I will also be getting signs. I don't know why I keep repeating that. Every book I'm going to show you, I will be getting signs. <laughs> um, and the last one by Holly Bourne is It Only Happens in the Movies, which... Um, yeah, it's basically a modern romance book, but like focusing on the way romance only happens really in movies and the reality isn't as nice, I guess. Yeah, that's basically it. I think this takes place at a movie theater, but I'm not sure about that. But um, it sounds really fun. Like, I think it like starts with the cliche movie type meet cute and romance and then like reality starts seeping into it. So that sounds really interesting. Um, I love just the cliched romances, but I also really love when books subvert that. So I'm very excited to read this as well. I'm going to be excited to read all of these, but I also have not read any of them. Actually, I've read one of them. That's a lie. I've read one of them. <laughs> one of the 12 books I'm going to show you I've actually read. <laughs> Which, let's just go to that one, right? So another author that's going to be at Yalk is Karen M. McManus who is the author of One of Us is Lying. Um, I own a, book, a box set by her, which has multiple books by her. But um, since I'm already going to be carrying a lot of books with me, I'm only going to bring one book. And I've decided to bring One of Us is Lying. This is the only book of hers that I've read. Uh, but it's like the start of it, or the start of her journey and everything. And I think if I have one book by her that I want side, I want it to be the first one. So even though I've already read this one, I'm going to take this one with me to London just so I can have this one signed. And if she keeps appearing, I might get the other one signed as well, or I might one year bring all the ones I have that aren't signed yet, but for now I will only bring one book with, for, with me. So, um, one of us is lying. I read this not too long ago, so if you like watched my um, TBR for the Aurelium Readathon or my vlog for the Aurelium Readathon, you'll have heard me talking about it already. But it is basically a murder mystery with breakfast cup club. Oh, it is basically a murder mystery with black. Oh my god, I cannot say breakfast. 
it is basically a murder mystery meet. Wow, this book is like a curse, I can't speak anymore. We can do this. It is basically a murder mystery with breakfast club tropes in it. So it's for completely different teenagers, a geek, a jock, a criminal princess, as it says at the top, like the breakfast club, who are brought together in detention and are all suspected of murdering a classmate of theirs who is also in detention. And so throughout the story, you're trying to like figure out what's happened and if one of them is lying and is guilty or if they're all innocent or, you know, what happened to the dad's kids. And I really love this book. I believe I gave it five stars. I'm, yeah, I really loved it. After I read this, I bought the box sets of Karen McManus's books because I just, yeah, I loved them and I wanted to read more of them. So this is the only one I've already read that will be going with me to London. Though, hopefully, a couple of the ones I'll be showing you I will have read before Yawk, which takes place, um, I think the 8th of July. I travel to London on the 7th and I think the Friday it starts and I travel the first day. So I think it starts the 8th of July. So hopefully before then I'll have read a couple more of these books. <laughs> but yeah, One of Us is Lying is the next one I will be taking with me. And then I want to like mention the books I already owned before going into my new haul. So the next one is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Barnard. Um, I saw this in a bookstore years ago and bought it. I am not as interested in it now anymore, to be perfectly honest. So um, I hope that like hearing her talk and meeting her will like reinvigorate me into wanting to read her books because it does sound interesting. It's um, about a deaf person and a mute person who meet and like fall in love and I do really like the idea I guess it sounds like a cute romantic story and as someone who does sometimes have like trouble speaking and being verbal uh, I like the idea of reading about someone who's mute and still succeeding I'm not mute at all but I do struggle with like verbalizing my thoughts and especially if I'm like really tired or really anxious with people I don't know I do struggle with like talking so um, yeah, it sounds nice to read about. So this is one of the books that I will be getting signed. And yeah, I already owned this book because I bought, saw it in a bookstore years ago and bought it. Oh god, I love how shiny the cover is, especially in the camera. That's so pretty. And the last one I owe, already own that I'm going to be taking with me to London is Loveless by Alice Oseman. I'm expecting Alice Oseman's signing line to be super long and super popular, especially with Heartstopper, like the TV show having just come out. But this is the only book by hers that I own and I have not read any of them yet. I am interested in like all of her books, but this one feels the most personal to me, which is also why I'm kind of scared to read it. <laughs> um, this is a story about um, a college student who uncovers or like realizes their own asexuality and aromanticism and like learns to deal with that I guess like learns to accept that about herself um yeah and I am asexual but I also not sure about the romantic aspects of it all so I'm kind of scared to read this book and recognize myself too much in it which is why I haven't read it yet but it's also why I bought it so I am excited to read it. I just need to get through it. <laughs> need to start reading it. But I, I'm loving this. I definitely think her line will be very long. So I'm not sure if I will be able to get it signed. Because I do know that like there's like a two hour slot for most authors. So if the line is too long, you might be out of luck, I guess. So I'm hoping that I will be able to get a virtual queue ticket of a low enough number that I will be able to get it signed. But Fingers crossed, I guess. Um, yeah, Loveless by Alice Usman. And then we're gonna move on to Hall. These are six new books. I all bought them in the last two months or so. Like when I saw all the offers announced between, and I decided that I was gonna be able to go to London because that was a bit of a like mental struggle for a while as well. Like if I would actually be able to attend Jalk and go to London. But I have decided I will be able to. 
I don't care about my health anymore. <laughs> no, that's a lie, but I'll be fine with just having to recover from it for a while because I am so excited about this. So once I decided that yes, I was just gonna do it because I wanted to and I loved it and fuck everything else basically, I'll just have to take some weeks to recover afterwards. Um, I went through all the offers as I said and I narrowed down the books I wanted to buy to six, which was really difficult. But I, I don't wanna take too much with me to London because I'm planning on buying so much in London as well. So I narrowed it down to six and I'm going to show you all six of them now. So the first one that I narrowed, that I decided to buy was um, Last One to Die by Cynthia Murphy. Now this is kind of a funny story. I actually did not decide to buy this one. <laughs> I had decided that Cynthia Murphy was an author that sounded really interesting and her book sounded really cool to me because she writes like thrillers and like mysteries and I've been really getting into those the last couple of months. But I wanted to try her book, Win Cool, Lose Die. However, for some reason, I ordered this one instead. And I did not realize I'd ordered this one instead of Win, Lose, Kill, Die until I like gathered all the books for that I wanted to take with me to Yog because I decided when I finished my last book, which was What I Shipped Down, that I only wanted to read books for Yog so that when London actually came, I would not be reading an extra book that I wanted to take with me to London and also so that like I'd already read some of the books by the authors which I do prefer to already have read some books by the authors when I get them signed so when I like gathered all the books I realized that this was not the one I'd written down on my list of books I wanted to buy but I think it's just because the covers are a bit similar and also it's four words and the last one is die so I did not plan to buy this book but I did because in my tired brain I just ordered the wrong one, which is fair. But I am currently reading it because after having re read two really long books it, before this, I read um, two books that were about 500 pages or more. I just wanted to read something short. And this was the shortest book in the Yog pile. So um, this is about an Irish girl who goes to London for a summer for a drama course. And when she arrives at like the dormitories where they're staying, um, she switches rooms with a girl because the girl is afraid of heights and has a room really high up in the building. And that girl gets murdered. So in the room where Neve, the main character, was supposed to be staying in, they find the other girl dead. So it's like a mix of mystery of like, how did she die? Who killed her? But also, did they mean to kill her or did they mean to kill Neve? Because Neve was supposed to stay in that room. So throughout the whole book, it's a bit of um, yeah, a bit of scary mystery. And like the the tagline says, if Lucas could kill, she'd be dead already. So you kind of know that someone is like after her. Um, I am already over halfway through, so I'm not I'm not sure how much else I can say without like spoiling the main things. I can say that. I am enjoying it more than I thought I would because um, I really enjoyed mysteries and the uh, like thriller aspect that the synopsis gave but then the um, author refused that are also on there mentioned like um, a supernatural horror fest and like I don't really read horror and I don't really read the supernatural aspect either so that one that part of it was kind of not scary or frightening but it like I wasn't sure how I'd enjoy it, but so far I'm really enjoying it. It is supernatural, so yeah. I mean, not like overtly, but there's like a bit of like ghosty stuff. I mean, I don't know who the killer is yet, so I don't know how supernatural it'll get, but there are some like hints to supernatural stuff, but I am really loving it so far. Um, I think I will finish it in the next couple of days. And then I am actually not sure if I will be bringing this book with me to London or if I'll decide to buy Win, Lose, Kill, Die after all and in London and have that signed. Or maybe I'll just do both. I don't know yet. I mean, it's a thin book. It's not going to be that big of a difference if I take it with me or not. So I probably will, but I am loving it. So yeah, it's a, it's a fun read, which is weird because it's like about girls being murdered and attacked. But I like murder mysteries, apparently. So yeah, it's fun. And 
Um, this is just going to be a random order that I show you them in. They're just the order. They're only in a pile because I don't really have a particular order I want to show you in them in. So the next one is um, Dangerous Remedies, Remedy, singular, by Kat Dunn. Um, I try to like limit myself in fantasy books that I bought because I know from experience that I don't really read fantasy books that much but they just always sound so interesting and the covers are so beautiful so this was one of the few that I just had to buy I could not not do it basically I mean look at how cool this looks so this basically takes place I think during the French Revolution or maybe like just after it I think like uh, the king and queen are already beheaded at this point, but the revolution is still like maybe going or something like that. But um, yeah, it takes place around that time. And it's about a group of teenagers who um, I think basically save others from getting beheaded. I'm not completely sure about that, but um, it sounds like a group of fun family. There's magic in it. And they're like breaking into prison to save someone in the first chapter because I like read a bit of an excerpt and it sounds like a fun adventurous novel so and it looks beautiful so I could not let it go yeah I'm not sure what it's about to be honest besides what I just told you but it's about a group of teenagers who are all cool and like a bit of criminals maybe like rebels and who are breaking in to save a girl from prison and beheading and that girl has magical powers that's as far as I understand it. But the first chapter just done it so fun. So I had to buy it. I could not let it go. Um, it's beautiful. I'll probably read it pretty soon. I'm not sure when yet. Because there are so many books I want to read. But it looks beautiful. So yeah. Dangerous Remedy by Kat Dunn. And I know this one already has a sequel out. But you know. I have to read the first book before I buy the sequel. <laughs> Then the next one is completely different genre. We're gonna go to romance and rom-coms. Heartbreak Boys by Simon James Green. Now this is an author I have already read before. I have read Alex in Wonderland by this author and loved it. But Alex in Wonderland I had already gotten signs because I, um, he was a jog before and I bought Alex in Wonderland and got it signed that year when he was a jog and I loved it so I decided <laughs> I'll buy another book by him. So I decided on Heartbreak Boys because honestly it just sounded funny and cute. It's about um, a boy who got dumped basically and then his ex-boyfriend I think is starting to date a new person and he like Oh my god, I don't know how to explain this, <laughs> but um, it's basically a fake romance, fake love story, fake relationship love story where the exes of two... Oh my god. <laughs> um, right, Jack is the main character. His ex starts dating a new guy. That new guy's ex, who is called Nate, um, Jack and Nate pretend that they're like together on Instagram and stuff and they're like super cute to make their exes jealous and not like feel like they're winning I guess um, to prove that they're like over them so that's what I'm aware of <laughs> that was a terrible explanation but it sounded f cute and fun and yeah I wanted to give it a try uh, the other book by him that I was really interested in buying was Gay Club but it wasn't out yet when I like bought all the books and I wasn't sure if I would get it in time so I might buy that one in London when, because it's definitely out I think it's out now but like with delivery and stuff the, the books that I like aren't usually in stock in the bookstore in my small town so I have to buy them online or like order them and then it's a bit of a gamble if it would get there in time so I decided on Heartbreak Boys because it sounded cute and fun and I might buy Gay Club in London because it looks pretty and it also sounds fun <laughs> but yeah um, Heartbreak Boys by Simon James Green. Okay, three more books to go. <laughs> We're gonna go with another romance, another queer romance, though this one is sapphic, and it is Not My Problem by Sierra Smith. Kiara Smith. I don't know if you say the C as in like an S sound or a K sound. I think it's Sierra, but it might be Kiara. Um, either way, this, um, honestly, when reading the 
the blurb of what it's about it sounds pretty dark it's like about a girl who struggles with like i think an alcoholic and maybe even abusive family and um no i don't think abusive but alcoholic definitely and like um yeah it says like her own life is a mess but she's like fixing problems in everyone else's lives but then the reviews of it make it sound super funny so i'm interested in the mix between that like um one of the reviews on the book itself compares it to dairy girls and sex education which are two shows that I, love. I mean i love sex education i've only just started watching dairy girls but i do find it very funny so i think this will be a really funny read even though as far as i'm aware it's about a girl with a ton of problems who fixes everyone else's problems instead of her own but it sounds like it will be fun and also i am really interested excited to read another sapphic romance it's been a while i mean it's really not been that long i read one in i read multiple in april but it feels like it's been too long so i'm excited to read another one <laughs> And then the next one is Undercover Princess by Connie Glynn. This is the first in the Rosewood Chronicles series. Um, it's been out for a while. I think the entire series is like six or seven books that are all, that are already out. And I've been like interested in buying these books for years, but I kept like deciding not to for some reason. And I'm not sure why that is because I really enjoy royalty stories, like books about princesses and stuff. So I'm not sure why I kept being like, oh, I don't know if I want to read it or not. Because I kept wanting to buy it and read it and then deciding not to. So when I saw that Connie Glynn was coming, I decided this is the push I needed to actually buy the book and read it. Because I've been thinking about buying it for years. So this is a book about um, a boarding school where two girls who are, are end up being roommates, one of which is a princess. However, they get mistaken for each other and the other girl ends up pretending to be the princess while the princess pretends to be a normal girl. As far as I'm aware, that's what it is. So a bit of the princess and the pauper vibes, which I love because I grew up with Barbie princess and a pauper and it's like my favorite thing ever. <laughs> but um, yeah, it sounds really fun and interesting. It's a bit more of a modern princess story, which is fun and different, but um, yeah, I am really excited to read it and I want to love it and I want to buy the entire series and love it. So I hope I will. I don't know why I kept deciding not to buy it. So that's honestly the main reason I bought it. When I saw Connie Glynn was coming, I was like, okay, stop thinking about it. Stop overthinking it and just buy it. Um, I do think this is aimed at a bit of a younger audience than the other books. I think in the books, are, not the books I bought it because they didn't have it, but they had other books in the series. Um, they were stuck in middle grade instead of in YA but as long as I'm like aware of that ahead of time I don't mind that so um, yeah I know it's like aimed at a younger audience than some of the other books that I just mentioned so that should be cool and fine I've read middle grade and love middle grade so that's not an issue as long as I'm like aware of it ahead of time which I am so I'm honestly glad that I was stuck in middle grade because then um, I go into it with the right expectations or if they are the wrong expectations, I'll be happily surprised that it's like scoot older. While if I go into it expecting like a YA gritty book and it ends up being like oh, more middle grade, I'll be like confused and disappointed probably. So I'm happy it was shelved as middle grade. So I know with which expectations to go into it. But yeah, I'm really excited to read it. And it looks so pretty as well. Like I know they always say don't judge a book on its cover, but I think everyone who reads books and buys books knows that you definitely judge books on their covers and these covers are beautiful and then the last book that i bought which is actually the only book that won't fit nicely on my shelf of british paperbacks because it is a different size <laughs> but um this is i think the american edition instead of a british one because british ones are all the same height which i love <laughs> um the next book and last book i bought is castles in their bones by laura sebastian this is the other fantasy novel that I just could not not buy. So I managed to only buy two of them, even though a lot of them sounded cool and interesting because I just know from experience, I don't really read fantasy. But it looks so stunning and it sounds so interesting and fun. I had to buy it. It is really chunky though. Like it's another like 500 page plus book, which is why I haven't read it yet. I nearly did. Uh, let me first tell you what it's about. <laughs> 
God. Um, right. This is about three princesses, triplets, who are all like coming of age. I think they're like turning 16 or 17, but that's like old enough to get married, apparently. So their mother sends all of them out to a different kingdom to marry that kingdom's prince or king. And they all have like the secret mission their mother has given them. I mean, they know about it, the three of them and their mother, but no one else's. And it's basically their mother's plan to reign the entire continent instead of just their country. So each princess is sent out to a different kingdom and she's sent there to manipulate their kings into going to war with each other or to kill their kings. I'm not sure what the missions are yet because I only read the excerpts, but uh, the excerpt did mention that someone was like skilled in poison stuff. So it sounds really interesting and intriguing. And I love court politics and stuff. So yeah, I am really excited in reading this. And I'm also really excited to see how different it will be. How different the three princesses are. As well as the people they're marrying. And like their missions and their environments they get sent into. So yeah, this is the first of the series as well. I don't think the second book in this series is out yet. I know that this book came out in 2022, so definitely not. <laughs> the copyright for the cover art is 2022, so the sequel is not out yet. But I am really interested in this. I have actually, since buying this, seen Laura Sebastian in my TikToks a lot. And it has only made me more interested in reading her books, to be honest. So yeah, I'm very excited to read this book. I actually wanted to read this book after I finished What is Ship Down, because this was the like plot that had gripped me the most and like I could not get out of my head. But I had just read One Ship Down, which was 500 pages. And before that, I read Me Being Me is Exactly as Insane as You Being You, which is like 600 pages, I believe. So I did not want to read another 500 page book. So I decided to read the shortest book on the stack first. And then I'm probably going to read this one after that. So, so like a bit of short book in between, but then this one. So hopefully I will have finished this one before I had to London because I don't want to have to carry it around with me when I just like go out somewhere because I always take a book with me to read so if I like go to a park or something I do not want to have to sh to like carry this fake book with me I just want to carry a thinner book with me so that I will only have to carry this with me um I got just got a message about like the sizing so I think my storage is nearly full so um We'll have to wrap this up. Uh, yeah, I don't want to have to carry this with me when I'm like just to read it. I want to read it mostly in the Netherlands before I travel to London and then just carry it with me to get it signed and on the traveling days, but not any time else. So yeah, I'm very excited to read this book. Um, it's getting a bit rushed now because of that um, storage message, but I guess that just means it's time to wrap it up. I have shown you all my books. I guess I won't be telling you about my planning for Yog, which I did intend to also do, but I mean, it's still very unsure anyway, because I'm pretty sure it's still going to change between now and Yalk, the like actual Yalk schedule. So I guess maybe I'll do another video on that. If you're interested, let me know and I will go through what I'm planning on definitely attending a Yalk and what my maybes are and what my I wish I could, but I'm definitely not going to because of my energy levels, because <laughs> there are a lot of those as well. Um, if you're interested in hearing anything about that, let me know. If you have any questions about Yog in general, let me know. I might make another video about that. I have been a couple of times before, though it has been years since COVID. So things may have changed. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to go to Yog. I will definitely make a video about all the books I buy. I might make a vlog in Yog in London. I'm not sure yet, but I will definitely do a, ha a whole of all the books I buy in London and... I will definitely like tell you about it, I guess. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe, all that stuff, I guess. Um, it still feels awkward to say that, but I hope you enjoyed it and I had fun making it. So I guess that's the important thing, right? Let me know if you're also going to Yog, by the way, because I'm going on my own. So it'd be fun to like know other people who are going. So yeah. Um, Bye.